Hello, welcome back to the Groundbreaker International YouTube channel, or if this is your first time, welcome here for the first time. My name is Eric, and it's good to be here with you today. Uh, once again, another beautiful day in South Central Indiana, and I uh, just got done uh, doing some grilling today, and uh, I've got a gas grill here, a Weber Genesis that I got as a wedding gift and it still works. Now, I myself am more of a charcoal and wood type of guy. I like to barbecue a lot, slow cook meat, and um, I like to, to grill over real flames. And I will use this gas grill sometimes because it's easy, it's convenient, and right now, it's the only one I've got. My charcoal grill is rusted over. Uh, but I like real flame. I like to use the, the fire because it tastes better and uh, it's just, you just can't beat it. And so I got to thinking today, um, you know, we're talking about grilling and the fire and everything. And I started praying about what the Lord wanted me to release to you today. And I started thinking about the fire of God and what that is, why it's important. Why do us Pentecostals always talk about the fire? Of God and you know why do we need the fire I started thinking about that why is it that we need the fire because a lot of people may not understand you know I'm a Christian I'm saved and I love God just as much as anybody and I'm not going to argue that point with you I'm not saying that you don't however why do I need the fire why do we need the fire of God well it's like this the baptism of the Holy Ghost uh, is emboldens us. He, it emboldens us when we're totally immersed with the, the Holy Spirit who lives on the inside of us and then baptizes us just as they, as he did in the book of Acts to the, the ones that were in the upper room. And then all through the New Testament, I'm not going to argue with you about the baptism of the Holy Spirit, but, um, you know, it emboldened them. The church grew because of the fire. The fire of God is more than just speaking in tongues, although it's a part of it. It's the emboldened uh, resoluteness on the inside of you that you can't go backwards. You've been touched by God. You've been touched by the flames of God's hand. And so I started thinking about the how the Old Testament parallels and it correlates to the New Testament. And there's actually a letter in the Hebrew called the Sheen. And the sheen represents a couple of different things. One thing, it's a picture of teeth. It could look like a picture of teeth or sharpness. But it could also look like flames or fire. And the fire there is represented by the Hebrew gematria of the number 300. Now, three, of course, is the trinity times 100 so it's the the godhead we're talking about the godhead here is literally the letter for fire so god is a god of fire i want you to understand that today that he's not just some dead dried up religious symbol god is a living god god the father god the son god the holy spirit three in one are representative of the fire of God, the representative of fire. What does fire do? Well, fire, for one thing, changes things. It transforms things. And in fact, Jewish rabbis will tell you that the sheen is also, uh, has a meaning of transformation or change. Because when we, when you were touched by fire, it will change you. It will, you will have to change. Fire transforms and molds uh, an object into a different shape. If you put metal, a metal ring, into hot fire long enough and hot enough, that ring is going to melt down and it's going to change form. It's going to change into a different substance. And so fire will change you. The fire of God will change you. That's why it's so important not just to be filled with the Holy Spirit, baptized in the Holy Ghost, and the Bible says, and with fire. He said that he would baptize us in the Holy Spirit and with fire and with transformation and with the number 300. He would in, immerse us in that. 
And so that sheen has all kinds of secrets to it. I love talking about the sheen and the fire and the transformation of God. We live in a world today, I talked to you yesterday about where we are in this nation and how much we need God to revive us. Well, there's a, a word in the Hebrew uh, that is the word chaya. And the word chaya means to revive or to rekindle. And it's a picture of embers that are dying out that is breathed upon and the oxygen begins to make that heat that was trapped on the inside of those coals emerge. And so that word chaya there is uh, representative of Pentecost, how we are breathed upon by God. It's a picture of wind of the Holy Spirit and fire of God. And so it's made up of three letters, the, the word chaya, the chet, the yod, and the hey. The chet is the number eight, which means new life, new beginnings. It's the letter chet, which is the number eight. And, um, and it means new life, new beginnings. And then you have the, uh, the yod, which is a picture of a hand. And it's more specifically the fiery hand of God. That's what the yod is. And the yod is the one letter that it's, it, it, the, there's a yod, at least one yod, in every other Hebrew letter. And so it makes up the other Hebrew letters. And the Jewish people talk about the yod and say that it's the spark of the Spirit of God in everything. Because God is omnipresent. God is in every one of those Hebrew letters. And he's everywhere in the world, right? And everywhere in the universe. And so the chet, the yod, the fiery hand of God, and the hay. The hay is the Holy Spirit wind. It means wind or breath. And it's a, obviously a picture of Pentecost. And so it's said that when you put the yod and the hay together in a word, it represents Pentecost. So you see all the parallels here about God being a God of fire and transformation. And we need God to touch us with his hand and to breathe on us with his breath, with his wind. Why? Because it gives us new breath or it gives us new life a new foundation, and it transforms us. What trans Why do we need transformed? We need transformed every day because even though we may be saved, we accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we still need transformed. We need God to sanctify us continually to take off all the, all the junk off of us and out of our lives, right? We need God to cleanse us and to transform us, and he transforms us through fire. How do we get in the fire? We get in the fire through spending time with him. Moses had an encounter with God at the burning bush. It was a, a bush that was on fire, yet it was not consumed. When Moses had that encounter, it changed him. And not only him, it changed his family. And it changed an entire nation. It was the birthing of a brand new era in a nation, which is Israel. And so... We need the fire of God in our churches. We need the fire of God personally in our lives. You may be out there today and you may be saying to yourself, well, you know, my church is dead and dried up. I really hate to hear that. I'm really sorry to hear that for you. However, I've got some advice for you. Stop, stop relying on your church or your pastor to stir you up. Stop relying on your church to be your fire get your own fire. You personally, I'm not telling you go start your own church. I'm telling you go get your own fire. Say it with me. I need my own fire. I need an encounter with God face to face, one on one, myself. Whether anybody else in this world is on fire for God or not, I need to spend time in the presence of God. Spend time in worship, soaking up the presence of God. How do you do that? Just begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Begin to receive from God, from your spirit to his. Connect with the Father. It's a spiritual thing, how you connect with him. Just begin to shut everything else out and connect with the Almighty God. The Godhead, three in one. The number, 300. The changeless one. Amen. God is a good God that wants to transform your life. He wants the best for you. 
but we cannot rely on anyone else to give us the fire. We've got to get it from the source. And the source is the one, the three in one, God himself. Let the Holy Spirit breathe on you today with the breath of God. Let the Son of God transform you and change you through his blood. And let the God, uh, God the Father, begin to touch you with his right hand and breathe on you and allow his will to overtake your life today. I guarantee you, if you do that and you begin to do those things, you will never be the same. And you never know. Your church may begin to change. How about you begin to change the church? If your church is dead, dead and dried up, how about you catch on fire and let everyone else catch up to you? Praise be to God for that. That's awesome word today for you. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope that you're enjoying these daily videos, these daily vlogs. And uh, I, I'm just absolutely ecstatic to be able to preach the gospel, even in the midst of a pandemic right now, uh, all over the world. And so if you enjoyed this video today, I want you to help me. Can you help me? I want you to hit the subscribe button. It helps us a lot because the more subscribers we have and the more views we have, um, you know, the more people that we can reach because our videos go up in the a logarithm for YouTube. And it means that the gospel can go out to even more people. And so if you would hit that subscribe button today and hit the notification bell, ring it right now, ring it, ring it in Jesus' name. And that keeps you in the loop so you can know what's going on with us in our ministry. Check us out at gbreaker.org to, to know what's going on at Groundbreaker International. Um, getting some other uh, services and things scheduled today. It's exciting times. It's an exciting time right now to be involved in the kingdom of God. I hope you enjoyed this today. Share, 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 subscribe. I love you all. God bless you. And we will see you tomorrow.